Miroslav Penkov was born and raised in Bulgaria. His stories have appeared in many magazines, was granted Best American Short Stories. And um, his debut collection, East of the West, was published in over a dozen countries. Um, he is the current literature protege, as we know, um, working alongside um, someone who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, is Michael Ondaatje, who was just called away. He's on, he's on the plane to Toronto now, which means we can really say anything about him that we like since he was so, so, so careful not to be here. I think he's a bit embarrassed about being spoken about in public. And Miroslav is assistant professor of creative writing at the University of North Texas and is the fiction editor of the American Literary Review. Okay, let's be serious first. Um, what, what, what did you learn? How, how did it go? The yeah, oh yeah, then we'll... Yeah, the, 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 yeah. um, well, it, it, it's funny that you should mention this, but I too was a little bit suspicious of this program on two counts, and I always thought it was because I'm Bulgarian, and I think Bulgarians are born <laughs> suspicious <laughs> and suspecting. Um, when I received the email, I mean, you look at this email, it says Rawlings in the header and you're thinking, I mean, somehow this bypassed the spam filter, we get those emails a million a day. And then I kept reading, I was like, okay, this, this, this sounds a bit legit. Um, and they invite you to apply, and then of course you apply, how could you not? And then another Bulgarian trait, I started worrying, and the second <laughs> suspicion. Before I was even invited, uh, you know, told that I would be a finalist, I just started imagining what if. What if I was chosen? Would this work? Can this work? Can you orchestrate a relationship that is meant to arise naturally? I mean, you mentioned Elizabeth Bishop, uh, Marianne Moore. It's a very specific set of circumstances that allowed these two women to be as close as, as, as they were. Elizabeth Bishop's father died when well, she was eight months old. Mother suffered with mental illness. Actually died the year, when, uh, 34, I believe, when the two women met. Uh, Marianne Moore never married, didn't have children. So took, took on Elizabeth under her wing, mother her in a way, nurtured her. I mean, it's a perfect relationship, arose naturally, synchronistically, the way they, they met. So can you, can you manufacture this? Uh, um, and also, is the pairing going to be, I mean, you see how Bulgarian things are so much more. <laughs> if the pair is not right, um, I think a little bit of damage can be done to the mentor in the sense waste of time, um, annoyance, but also to the protege in the sense of the ego is going to suffer a little bit, self-esteem will be lost, but also possibly the work may be thrown in different directions if it's not an appropriate match. Um, and I don't want to be too mystical about it, but I think the, the, you know, choosing a mentor, it's, there's something, a guide, you know, someone to, to, to lead you, advise you, you know, to give you strength. Um, and then of course, when I was very lucky to actually be chosen, none of this mattered anymore, all of this worry was put put to rest, and then we started meeting and talking, and I understood that you know, it was pointless to worry because, um, and I'm glad that he's on the plane again, but Michael's truly really a wonderful person, and <laughs> talking to him um, it just opened up in new perspectives, and now to be a little more specific than that, um, something that I never thought I would be interested in was working for, writing a film. It just didn't interest me. I thought I was above it. I was going to be a novelist. You know, I would worry about every little word, every little paragraph. The son said, I don't want to write technical documents. And now Michael talked talk very, very charmingly about film, and he's influenced so much by film. Um, in, in, in many ways, the way he, he puts his novels, or that's just my observation, is has to resembles in a way the, the, the way film is put together in the editing room, where he would move one part from here um, to there in the novel. So, and then I read his great book about the conversations with Walter Murch, and just got, for one of a better word, inspired. I mean, very interested. What if I were to try my hand at writing a screenplay? And just, again, synchronistically, it so happened that in Bulgaria, two of my stories were being optioned at the time. So I called the director and said, can I help? And I've been helping since, and it's been wonderful. And then the other thing that, just listening to even something that Michael mentioned now, that I understood is the writer's hunger for influence from other art forms. That you need to be, to be, a, to be a proper writer, you really need to be hungry for knowledge outside of your genre, um, outside of fiction, but even outside of poetry and film. Um, I mean, you're influenced by painting, by, you know, you came to Bulgaria and we, we, we observed so many, 
from the frescoes and, and the murals and from, from music. So now I started just researching different topics and, and being interested, being interesting. And then it really also helped that I had this novel that I had just finished um, when the mentorship began, or a draft of it. So I, we were able to have something to look at. Some, some text that Michael was very kind to read the first 100 pages and give me very specific suggestions from line edits amid words like water closet and rooster. Um, <laughs> but there really is a rooster actually within the first 20 pages. Um, you should change that word. Yeah, right away. Uh, to like, grander suggestions that I, that I was able to apply to the, to the following 100, to, to more than the first 100 pages, like the, the suggestions of how to further complicate the main character, the narrator of the novel, how to uh, alter the pacing of certain chapters, um, and, and so on. So I mean, it's been an incredible, incredible experience. And yet, I know that there are at least some young writers out there, and I want to just reiterate what Michael was saying. Yes, this has been great for me, but it is not necessary for you to have Michael and Dutchie as a mentor to write your own books. Um, you have all the mentors out there, and all these beautiful, beautiful writers, and their, their own work is essentially what all you need um, to guide you. And the final thing, just I was reminded again, when I was very little and kind of a dysfunctionally shy child, my mother would literally hold me by the hand and take me to the playground where another kid was playing and say, okay, here, this is Miroslav. What's your name? Okay, now the two of you play. And I feel like what, what Rolex has done is something similar. <laughs> it's like, hi, this is Michael, this is Miro, now play. <laughs> it's important to, to allow yourself the freedom to, to play. It happens in Ireland. I can interrupt for a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when Miro came to Toronto, um, the first few hours he seemed a bit distant. I said, um, because the World Cup was on, I said, are you a fan of the World Cup? I said, I'm taking all the shows while I'm back here in Toronto. So we got postponed all the true discussion about the World Cup. You have to have your priorities. In Ireland, it happens now. Really, is every year for a new genius emerges. You know, some young guy, or girl, someone in their early twenties writes a book, and everyone calls it a masterpiece. And it, it really is still happening. And um, it's, it's an interesting literary culture in that way. But, but when you get to my, when you get to my advanced age, and you watch this, you realise: Do they have the slightest idea of what's coming? In other words, your thirties, your forties, your fifties, your sixties. You know, you have to show on the road. You can buy one book. But the idea about five or six or going in at, say, Tony Morrison stage and having a new novel out this year, did, did either of you get that sense from Tony Morrison or from Michael and Dachi of that idea of how you, the, the amount of dedication required, the amount of seriousness required, the amount of thought and care put into not just this book, but the idea that somehow that the mind would be dedicated towards the creation of books in some funny, permanent way that might be shown obviously but might be displayed in some other way that, that you might have seen. Would, would you like to come on that idea? Yeah, I think that touches on that idea of this commitment to the writing life. I mean, I've sort of long held that commitment, but yes, it's extremely hard to sustain a whole creative line. Um, I don't think the project, since I necessarily get I don't think it gets easier. I don't know if you've found that from book to book. I mean, they've sort of each present their own, um, you know, their own challenges, each one. I mean, what did the, the, Zen, the, the Zen Suzuki, you know, always be a beginner? That's a little bit how I approach each project. Um, but yes, I, I, I have so much admiration for people who have a, a a, a body of work, yeah. yeah. I also think it's it's a little bit important, I feel, for a young writer not to try to, to, to see too far into the distance. It's too scary. I mean, it's too scary. You scare yourself too much. Um, but it's been just really nice to, to observe. I mean, that's the other thing that this, this allows you, kind of vicariously, to see how your mentor handles himself um, in different situations. but. One thing that Michael has been advocating uh, with my manuscript, but writing in general, is patience. 
and it's something we have very little of, maybe because of the success in the postal career. Even career seems to be a long word for a writer. Um, but take your time, write your book well, and write it to the best of your ability, and push yourself. And what's the rush? And what's the rush? <laughs>